to understand my call story, I think I need to tell you a little bit about my life. I'm a 19-year-old sophomore at Messiah College, majoring in Christian ministries, planning on attending seminary. I have six beautiful nieces and one handsome nephew, and I have the greatest friends alive. That's not how it all started, though. I grew up with a mother, a single mother, who was addicted to drugs and alcohol. She was never around, and she often cared about when she was going to get her next drink or drug than me. She was often not around. <clears throat> I often lived with strangers who found it amusing to abuse me physically, mentally, and emotionally. Our dinners out would consist of going to a bar, and I'd sit there when mom got drunk. I could go on and on with negative experiences from my childhood, but I'm certainly not going to. I want to focus on what God is doing in my life right now. I did have a grandmother who knew of the necessity of going to church. She made sure that I was at church every Wednesday for youth group and every Sunday for worship. I had awesome experiences when I went to church. I was able to be active in the choir and on the church's praise and worship team. I was able to be active in the youth group. I was able to play handbells and to be an apprentice in the sound room. And I got to travel to Africa twice on mission trips. During my eighth grade year of schooling, my mother was charged with three DUIs. And as I said before, I grew up in a single parent home. I had a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother, and an aunt and uncle, which was my family. My aunt and uncle were also addicted to drugs and alcohol, and my grandmothers both had medical conditions of their own. So this just left me by myself. And as I said before, I had a wonderful church family. And one particular couple in the, in the church opened up their doors, opened up their lives, and opened up their hearts to me, and allowed me to live in their home with them. I was fortunate to have them become my parents after a few years living there. And this is the exact reason why I'm here tonight. We have just witnessed one biblical calling. I though feel most connected with the call of Jeremiah. Jeremiah's calling was consecrated while he was still in the womb of his mother. Even though I have lived through some horrific experiences, God has always been there to provide and to protect me. God told Jeremiah to not be afraid because God was going to be there with him and God was going to rescue him. I feel those are the exact words that God has been telling me for years. This summer, God has allowed me to live through a terrorist bombing in Uganda, Africa. I was watching the World Cup with five other teammates when a bomb went off in front of us. The people sitting in front of us, the people sitting beside us, and the people sitting behind us all died. God had to be there with us that evening. And God had to have his protecting shield around us. I won't ever understand why I'm alive right now. God must though have greater plans for my life though. Just like Jeremiah, God has continually given me the strength and the courage to continue with my calling. God has given me a passion for the people and this church. To be honest, I love going to church. And I look forward to Sunday morning every single week. But it would be nice to be called as an ice cream truck driver because I love eating ice cream. <laughs> I would love to be called to be an airline steward to travel all over the world. And I would love to be called to be a teacher, to have my summers off. <laughs> but I know that God is calling me into ministry, and I need to be faithful to that call. I am also very nervous about actually leading a church. I'm scared that I'm not going to know enough about the Bible. I'm scared I'm going to make a mistake while leading a committee meeting. I'm nervous about how I'm going to handle conflict in the church. All of these uncertainties will never weigh more than the exciting things about ministry. I'm looking forward to knowing people more at an intimate level. I'm going to love guiding people into a deeper relationship with Jesus. Seeing the work of Jesus already excites me, so I can't imagine what it's going to be when I'm actually in ministry. Even though there are so many negative things about ministry, I honestly couldn't imagine doing anything else. The question I struggled with the most as a senior in high school was, they always asked me, what do you want to do when you grow up? 
Don't you hear that all the time? I think that's a great question to ask, but I think we need to refocus that question on what we are called by God to do. You see, I think we have a lazy understanding of what it means to be a Christian. We think that belonging to God is all about our being blessed with the security of the knowledge that God loves us, rather than our being claimed for God's purpose. Let me say that again. We think that belonging to God is all about our being blessed with the security that, that God loves us, rather than our being claimed for God's purpose. God calls people on a variety of careers. This weekend we're focusing on pastoring and, and um, deacon ordination. But God calls people to be a business person or to be a sales clerk or to be a doctor or to be a missionary. God has a specific plan for our life. And every day we have the freedom to ignore that plan or to follow God. Every day we have an opportunity to grow more and more into the people that God intends for us. I've never seen in the skies, Chris, you are going to be a pastor. God never gave me that, unfortunately. God, though, has given me those desires and the passions for his people and the church. And it has been those continued affirmation of those, you're going to make a great pastor. The talks from the older members of my church that I'm able to fully accept and acknowledge my call into ministry. So I think the question is for each of us. And I think that's why we're here together this weekend. Are we listening to God's difficult call? Never let anything in your life not let you follow God's plan. Our job is to listen to God, not to our own wishes and fears. Once we begin to listen, God will certainly assist us on our journey. This is the weekend where we can finally say, here I am, God, send me. And I think this is a life that we are called to live, meant to live, and created to live. Amen.